Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Anyone Can Click where we break down photography to its absolute basics one week at a time. I'm going to begin today's episode with a short story about how I got into wildlife photography. It all began in the year 2018 and that was the time that I first picked up a camera on a safari trip. I still vividly remember the experiences of that trip from the very first safari where we witnessed a pride of 18 lions at kissing distance to the last safari of the trip where we witnessed the helpless attempts of a mother giraffe trying in vain to protect her calf from prowling hungry hyenas nothing had prepared me for the kind of emotions that I felt on that trip That was when I decided that I wanted to make something of myself in the wildlife space. Now, because I had just picked up the camera, I photographed the entire trip exclusively in the auto mode. And yes, the pictures sometimes turned out fairly well, but there were times when the auto mode failed miserably, and I was left with moments that will now permanently reside only in my memory because i couldn't put them successfully on a memory card that's when i decided that i did not want to leave it to chance anymore and i wanted to really learn how to operate a dslr camera and use it for the potential that it really has now why am i telling you the story because the story highlights two questions the answers to which we are going to address in the topic of the day and in the next episode as well the first question is how does the camera determine its exposure settings when it is photographing in the auto mode and question number 2 why does it get it wrong when does it get it wrong and how do we avoid such situations now the answer to the first question is the first part of the topic and that is metering and the second question will give us the answer to the second part of the video which is exposure compensation now metering and exposure compensation are topics that i brushed past in the initial days of photography and i learned them in depth only much later that was when i realized how important both of these topics are which is why we will be spending a good amount of time and we will learn both of them in detail in fact exposure compensation is one of the first settings that we will be making even before we move to the exposure triangle that's how important it is but be warned this is going to be a little bit technical but it is also really interesting so please do stay with me till the end and although it's a little late to say this Without further ado, let's begin. So, coming to question number 1. How does the camera determine its exposure settings when it is photographing in the auto mode? To answer this question there are two points to keep in mind. The first one is that the camera has a single point agenda and that is to get the correct exposure. It's got absolutely nothing to do with the depth of field, with motion blur or with noise. These are creative choices that is left to us photographers. But for the camera it's all about getting the correct amount of light in the photograph. So naturally if it needs to determine the amount of light that is needed for the photograph it first needs to determine the amount of light in the scene Now you may have seen a device which looks like this used by photographers in weddings or when they are doing portrait photography This is an incident light meter and it measures the amount of light that's falling on the subject But imagine photographing a pride of lions with a light meter in hand that would probably be the first and the last photograph that we would ever take so there has to be a better way to do this right there is the camera has its own inbuilt method of measuring light but instead of measuring the amount of light that's falling on the subject it will measure the amount of light that is reflected back from the subject 
the basic premise is that more the light in the scene more is the light falling on the subject and more is the light that is reflected back from the subject this process of measurement of light in the scene is what is called metering understand the rest of the topic on metering i'm going to give you a very different analogy the analogy between the camera's metering system and the traditional education system now a traditional education system evaluates or measures the intelligence or brightness of a student with the help of grades similarly the camera's metering system too evaluates the brightness of the scene with the help of the signal strength now in the episode on iso we saw that when the light falls on the sensor it creates an electrical signal we also learned that the strength of the signal is directly proportional to the intensity of light just as the traditional education system has a passing mark which is an arbitrary benchmark to determine if the student is bright enough the camera too has its own internal benchmark its own internal signal strength which it will use to compare with the signal strength created by the reflected light to determine if the scene is too bright or too dark and then it's going to use the same three tools of the exposure triangle which is aperture shutter speed and iso to ensure that the amount of light that is finally entering the camera and falling on the sensor is creating a signal somewhere close to its own benchmark signal so what is this benchmark signal it is the signal of the color middle gray we move to point number 2 and this is actually a very interesting one the camera sensor does not perceive color it is not going to construct the scene in terms of color it uses the intensity of light to construct the entire scene let's understand with the help of the example of this white desk this is a single colored white desk so i'm going to take a photograph and i'm going to convert it to black and white the part of the desk which is in the sun which looks very close to the color white is also the one which is creating a very strong signal similarly the part of the desk which is in the shadows which is a deeper shade of gray is going to create a weaker signal and the part of the desk which represents an optimum amount of light is going to create a signal somewhere in between that is the signal which represents a scene which is having a moderate amount of light which is exactly what the camera wants so this seems like a fairly ingenious solution right but then why does it fail it fails because the camera's metering system has the same shortcoming that the traditional education system also has that both of them do not see the subject for what it really is they do not take into account the subject or the students inherent properties inherent strengths now a crow a blackbird a black panther they are all going to create weak signals because that's their nature they reflect less light that weak signal does not mean that there is less light in the system similarly a white bird a polar bear a snowy backyard they're all going to create really strong signals and once again that strong signal does not indicate the presence of too much light these are subjects which are going to reflect more light because of their inherent nature but the camera does not understand this property of reflectance which is why when you take a photograph of a black board and a white board they will both appear gray because that's what the camera is wired to do it brings everything to the mean and in the process the essence of the subject is completely lost this is one of the reasons why the metering system sometimes fails there is one other situation when the metering system might falter and that is in high contrast situations which is basically scenes where there are very bright and very dark parts in the same frame now the problem here is because of the camera's limited dynamic range and the fact that it does not know what the subject in your frame is 
both of these examples are better understood with the help of examples which is exactly what we will be doing in the second part of the video where we will learn about exposure compensation what we've learned is the basic concept of metering but with technological advancements there are some cameras especially the high end ones which have extremely smart metering systems they have what is called as scene recognition which gives them the ability to identify the type of scene and then determine the exposure settings accordingly which is why it is important to test your camera out to understand its metering capabilities because that is going to determine your exposure compensation settings it doesn't mean that there will be no uh, reason for exposure compensation it's just that the degree to which the exposure compensation is required may still vary but let this not bother you right now we're going to learn it in detail in the next episode and now finally we have reached the last part of the video and that is on metering modes now metering as we saw is the camera's measurement of the amount of light in the scene metering modes is the photographer telling the camera what part of the scene to look at when it is making this measurement should it be looking at the entire scene or should it be looking at a part of the scene based on that there are various metering modes but we will be using only one metering mode especially in the beginning part of photography and that is evaluative or matrix metering the reason for that is that we want to minimize the number of decision making points or variables when on the field especially when we are setting out in photography so what is evaluative and matrix metering mode basically in this mode the camera divides the scene into various zones and it measures the amount of light in each zone to determine the correct exposure required for the photograph basically it's measuring the amount of light in the entire frame so the matrix metering mode is represented with a symbol like this in your camera bodies remember that when the metering mode changes everything changes hence we're going to keep it simple and we're going to learn everything else keeping in mind that the metering mode that we are going to use is the evaluative or the matrix metering mode now with this we have reached the end of this video on metering Originally I was going to make just one video on metering and exposure compensation but as I started to develop the content I realized there was just too much to squeeze into one episode but nonetheless I hope you found this video useful and I hope you enjoyed that analogy between the metering system and the traditional education system if you did please do like subscribe and comment it greatly greatly helps the channel next episode we will learn about exposure compensation with a lot of examples until then take care goodbye